motorsport history was made earlier this month when a South African team competed in the first FIA International Touring Car Challenge at the famous Monza Grand Prix circuit in Italy. In a who's who of touring car racing from 12 countries, it was a trip into uncharted waters for BMW South Africa and factory driver Dion Joubert. BMW invites you to share in the trials and tribulations of Dion Joubert's assault on the Touring Car Challenge at Monza. BMW, sheer driving pleasure. The Monza race was billed as the unofficial World Touring Car Championship and presented BMW South Africa and Dion Joubert with a massive challenge. Joubert was determined that physically he would be equal to the task that lay ahead. I've uh, increased the aerobic or fitness, fitness uh, component of my training quite a lot um, since the sad car came. I um, find it's better to be fit rather than uh, strong, um, big muscles. Um, so I'm, uh, I started swimming more and running more than I, than I used to before. But I still I, I like to train um, my, uh, my body strength-wise, bodybuilding if you like, because um, I enjoy that and uh, find it helps as well. Um, so I, I do a, a, a certain amount of muscle groups, I split it up in a week and I do a certain amount of muscle groups each night. And I try and, and, and peak just before a race or uh, and, and the, the two days before a race I wouldn't do any training, any, any hard training anyway. So that I'm not stiff and sore or, or overtired when the race day comes. For the BMW squad, pre-race preparation included sessions with a sports psychologist at the team's mid-round headquarters. In whatever you're doing, do it with quality. Okay, so that we've got certain standards that we actually are moving with, that Juan set certain standards and Dion's got certain standards, each one of you guys have got certain standards, that ultimately it's a fight against yourself in achieving that quality. It's not a fight against somebody else or trying to beat somebody else. It's almost setting your own objectives, your own quality, and you're striving for that all the time. If you don't reach it, you set that next level for quality. If you reach it, you push that quality just a little bit further. It's going to be probably the greatest event of your lives without you even realizing it. So enjoy that moment. You know, get out there and take it all in. Take in those Italian crowds. Take in the difficulties with language. Take in the difficulties with what you're dealing with. But the most important thing, enjoy that moment. Okay, road joints. Uh, uh, two master cylinders. Yeah. Okay, the air regulators for the... Air the whole logistical uh, consignment has been done in close liaison with, with the Renfreight and SIA personnel. They've been of great assistance. They've been advising us at the various steps in the program. We've, we're taking a total of 19 cases and the total mass is 1.8 tonnes, which is a lot of uh, equipment, spare parts for the car, 30 wheel rims. I think there's just about everything we're going to need to do the rights on a, on a, on a big scale, we, we've got everything we're going to need there. The Johnson Matthew BMW 318i, campaigned by BMW in the Stanek Satcar series, was flown to Italy two weeks prior to the Monza race. The team competed in the penultimate round of the Stanek Satcar series at Kyle Army on September the 25th, with Joubert challenging strongly for the championship. This meant it was a race against time to deliver the car and tons of equipment to Jansmart's airport for loading onto a South African Airways flight to Milan. Three days later, Dion Joubert and BMW Motorsport Technical Manager Ali Strasser were back at Jan Smuts. This time it was their turn to fly to Milan. Strasser is a veteran of 25 years in motor racing, but everyone relishes a new challenge. Okay. This trip to Monza and the whole situation that South Africa be able to go to Italy and have an international competition, it's very, very great for us, and especially for myself. Because I think I've been about uh, 25 years in motor racing and uh, that is a challenge that I really look forward to be competitive and uh, also for Dion Jobert. It's his great uh, moment to race against uh, the uh, top uh, people from the world of racing like Winky Hop, Sopa, Ravalia. And that is a good challenge for him as well.
In a fine gesture to technicians who have worked on a variety of cars throughout the South African season, BMW Motorsport took to Monza its full complement of technical staff. Personally for myself it means a great deal to going over to Monza. Not only for myself but to represent my country South Africa as well. To me it means a great deal of hard work, a lot of dedication. Basically I've been very interested about motorsport all my life and this is like a, a, a dream come true. It is very important that, be, that a team from South Africa is represented at Monza, the first World Cup touring race. And we're very proud to actually be that team, to go there and, and do the thing and wave the flag for South Africa. Family and friends turned out in force to bid farewell to team members, some of whom were making their first trip overseas. Stay tuned to Motorsport Special for more on Dion Joubert and the BMW team's Monza campaign. BMW's assault on the Touring Car Challenge at Monza continues. The Monza Grand Prix circuit has been the spiritual home of Italian motor racing since 1922 and was built to rival Indianapolis and Brooklyn's tracks in the United States and Britain. Construction was completed in just 100 days and 70 years later the signs of motorsport evolution were there for all to see. The Johnson Matthey BMW team set up shop in Pit 24 and was the first team in residence. With the first official free practice session three days away, the major task for Joubert was to get to know the ultra-fast and daunting Monza circuit. While technical crew worked on the Johnson Matthey BMW, Joubert started out by driving slowly around Monza in a road car, before getting down to work in the race car. New race circuits provide driver and technical crew with a variety of problems, and initial test sessions were very much a learning curve for all concerned. For the South African team, the problems associated with getting to grips with Monza were compounded by rainy conditions. The weather was sometimes dull and grey, with some of the initial testing carried out on a track that was often wet. There is a special aura about Monza. Dion Joubert describes a lap around one of the world's great Grand Prix circuits. We're crossing the start-finish line now. We reach about 260 kilometers an hour before we get to the first chicane with Scott Rotophilia. Very hard braking down to second gear. I hope the chicane, I hope the curbs and all the chicanes. Important to keep to the right here, so that this, the exit from the second uh, from the field of chicane is, is very important, because it leads into the long curve of Grande, which is basically flat out. Even in um, even in, in pouring rain like, like it is now, you can see it's very wet. Um, curve of Grande is flat, and your exit from the field is very important, so that you get a uh, high top speed. We reach six gear again, yeah. Before we get to the next chicane, which is called Roger, um, if we brake very hard again, it's, it's even tighter chicane. In the wet here, it's very slippery. Um, hard braking, second gear, out of second, second and third, just before Lesmo, we might hit fourth gear. Um, the first Lesmo is much tighter than the second one. Um, it's very important because also, you're leading into the second one, the speed is very important. Keep the speed up and go to fourth gear, just, just before you hit the second uh, Lesmo which is probably one of the more important corners because it leads into another long straight and down to the Ascari um, chicanes. So we're going right up to um, fifth and then sixth gear. We go through the tunnel um, under the, the old uh, uh, track. And now we're going to go, we'll probably hit about 250 kilometers an hour here before we break for the Ascari chicane. It's quite tight, second gear again. And then third gear just in the middle here. And then uh, get the power, keep the power on. Get the power on, use all the curbs, right over the curbs, and then you hit fourth gear as you come off. And then you go to fourth, fifth, sixth gear. Once again, doing about 240, 250 kilometers an hour just before we get to Parabolica. Um, Parabolica is a funny sort of a corner, it's, it opens up on you. So you, the first part of it's very tight, and then it starts opening up, and you, you go right to the edge of the road and keep your foot flat so that you can reach, uh, go into the main straight as a high speed as you can. Modern race cars are highly sophisticated pieces of machinery. Touring car technology is almost on a par with Formula One, and to get everything working at optimum efficiency requires enormous interaction between driver and technicians. Well, I'll just get as well. Bad. No. Just a lesmo is dragging, is pushing this wheel, and then still hopping. 
For the South Africans, a major headache was the choice of tyres. With no previous experience at Monza, it was a process of experimenting with the tyre compounds and suspension setups to find the right combination. Well, I've done about 40 laps by now, and I think I've, I've learned the track now. Still having a little problem in the chicane, so I think it might, might be more that our car's not actually set up for that rather than um, uh, my driving. You know. No, I'm very happy, very happy. The role that tyres play in today's world of motor racing cannot be overemphasised. The choice of tyres is so often the difference between success and failure on the circuit, and tyre manufacturers spend huge amounts of money on research and development. Dunlop's operation at Monza was highly sophisticated. We're servicing 11 cars and we have about 1,400 tyres. That's split about 400 for Audi and 1,000 for the other, the, other, the other seven or eight cars. It's probably worth about 2 million rand in stock. And we've got four trucks here worth, in English pounds, about half a million. So it's, it's quite a sizable operation. Uh, it's, it's, it's a unique operation because it's the fusion of Italian, French, uh, German and English service teams all working together on the, same, on the same event. Imagine if we could run those things in Group N, eh? Yeah. It'd be quite a sensation. The Thursday before the race brought with it a complete change in atmosphere at Monza. It heralded the first of the official free practice sessions and suddenly there was an air of tension about proceedings. No, no. Oh, I see. Well, because the bump uh, broke. Oh. And I haven't got a spare anymore, so that arrived this morning. From now on, it was down to serious work. With 46 cars entered, the organizers split the practice sessions into two groups, with even numbers and uneven numbers practicing together. With so much at stake, there was plenty of tension in the South African pit, with team members watching Joubert's progress on the pit television monitor. Monza is essentially a circuit made up of three long straights connected by three fast curves into three chicanes. Part of the technique of a fast lap at Monza is to use the ripped curbing in the chicanes to your advantage. It's very rough in the car, and that's for sure. Um, and it's also rough in the driver if he's sensitive to the mechanical things. Um, but the main thing about the curves is that they're generally followed by very long straights. So it's important to go in at the right speed and come out quick enough. So what you try and do is put the power on before the curves and then drive right over all of them with your foot flat. That's the idea. Free practice was divided into two half-hour sessions, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. The brevity of the sessions left little time for trial and error. For Joubert and the technicians, it meant maximum concentration and application, and a constant exchange of information. Potential problems had to be solved with a minimum of time loss. It's wet, Yeah, around the back with the leg motion. How you feel with the is it uh, I think for it's the ratio better? I think it's in the and it's dry. You're How coming out. Like, was it cyber heated? Mm. How was it? Uh, 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 in between practice sessions, the South Africans found time to unwind for an hour or so. Team lunches in the Monza cafeteria always drew 100% attendance and were relaxed and informal affairs. They're giving it back. They're giving it away. They're giving it back. For drivers and technicians, the snatched moments of relaxation were always too brief. There were races to be won and work to be done. For the first time, the FIA Touring Car Challenge had brought together the cream of the world's touring car teams and drivers. For both leading manufacturers and the top drivers, the stakes were high. For Dion Joubert, the Monza outing was a milestone in a career that has seen the young Cape Tonian win the South African Championship in single-seaters and saloon cars. The young South African suddenly found himself in some pretty heavyweight motor racing company. The field included 15 former Grand Prix drivers, 10 national touring car champions, and the winners of the 1992 and 93 Le Mans 24-hour classic. The onboard camera in the Joubert Johnson Matthew BMW provides for some entertaining and unusual footage of a touring car at high speed around Monza. Just look at the strain placed on the front suspension and tyres by a combination of factors. This is no gentle Sunday afternoon drive through the park in the family sedan with grandma keeping the kids company in the back seat.
While Japair went about his work on the circuit, his progress was not only being carefully monitored by the BMW team, Dion's father Dennis was also at Monza to follow his son's fortunes. Himself a former South African champion, Dennis has played a major role in shaping his son's motor racing career. team, the opening three practice sessions had been going along smoothly enough. The team experimented with different tyre compounds and suspension settings, and apart from a brief sortie into the sand trap of the Lesmo curve, with no damage to the car, Jaber and the team were happy with the progress being made. As is so often the case in motorsport, all that was to change with little or no warning. Towards the end of the second free practice session, the BMW suddenly cut out. While Jaber tried to nurse the car back to the pits, there were some anxious faces back at home base. Look at his head and stuff. It's clean. Look at the belt. As the belt is, look at the motor that he's here. Come on, look, 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 look. When young Joubert finally got the car back to the pits, it was quickly evident that the problem was not a minor one. The car was wheeled into the workshop and we spoke to a concerned Dennis Joubert. They put so much effort into the whole of this venture that uh, they deserve to have some success. With the car back in the garage, it was decided to change both the engine and the gearbox. It is at times like this that race technicians around the world really start to earn their keep. With the engine out of the car, technicians were quickly able to pinpoint the problem. The flywheel had disintegrated, and all that remained was to pinpoint the cause for the problem. I need more cloth. That's how the piece is Where is the piece? Somewhere in the track. Is it? The flywheel problem left the team with something of a dilemma. It was decided to fit the spare motor built in Germany by South African technician Kurbis van der Watt. We think it's just a fatigue failure. Uh, we know some of the other BMW runners have been, been having similar problems. Um, the engine's at, its, uh, at the end of its uh, working life. So we're changing the engine, which was planned for tonight anyway. Planned or not, it all added up to burning the midnight oil for the technicians. And while the technicians were busy with the car, driver Jaber decided to take the opportunity to jog a lap of the circuit. At the team's regular working breakfast session the next morning, young Dion came in for some friendly ribbing over his lap time of just over 26 minutes. With race day edging closer and closer, there was still a great deal of work to be done in a short time. Each day was planned in minute detail, and team manager Jeff Goddard used the breakfast sessions to fully brief team members. Today we must remember we've got scrutineering now. According to the schedule there, there's two times that they will come around and inspect the car, which will be in the morning, from 10 till 12, and then from 2 until 4 o'clock. I'm not that sure exactly when they will be looking at our car, but uh, I'll inform you as the day goes on. I'll go and see them. Are they, are they coming to the pits? As the thing reads, they'll come to the pit. We don't have to take it across to any scrutineering base. Well, I mean, the car is real, though. There's a good help. Um, I would imagine it needs to be up on their air jacks. Make sure there's no leak, no oil leak, anything underneath when a car they allow it underneath and look at it. I think an important point here is when the engineer is in our pits, only Ali and Jeffrey can talk to you. But there's another thing really important. We must uh, think about uh, the number on the car. And the number, Carlos and I will we'll attach that after the second practice session. They were a little bit uh, worried yesterday that 
the decoys that they've given us a number of awards, we would actually damage them in an accident during the free practice. Scrutineering presented no problems for the Johnson Matley BMW team, and while the cosmetics were taken care of, there were a host of formalities that had to be completed where Joubert and the other drivers were concerned. Where is actually the way? I don't know. <laughs> All the drivers had to go through a documentation process where licenses and other details were checked. The atmosphere was one of friendly camaraderie. Numero? <laughs> The drivers were also weighed, but with the formalities over, it was back to business out on the circuit. The first free practice session was going along smoothly enough for Joubert. The young South African completed 14 laps with his times showing steady improvement. Then, out of the blue, the oil pressure warning lights came on and the engine started to cut out. Once again, young Joubert found himself trying to nurse the car back to the pits. After an encouraging start to the day, this was just the sort of thing the South African team could have done without. Reliability has not been a problem for the Johnson Matthew BMW team in the Stanek Satkar series in South Africa. A good finishing record is one of the reasons why Joubert is challenging for the championship, and the problems being experienced at Monza were frustrating for driver and team. Once again, there was an anxious wait for the team when Joubert was long overdue. The car finally came to a halt out on the circuit and was given a tow back to the pits. Once again, it was going to be a case of some quick diagnostics and equally quick remedial work. And I'm breaking like you did. You're breaking like now. Yeah. 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 Three months now. Yeah. So everything's going better. It's just the motor is down. Yeah. 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 Well, we, we had a, a the alarm came on for the wheel pressure, which could either be the motor uh, or, or the, just the dashboard sensor, but the only thing you can really do is switch off. So I, I did and coast it to a stop and I had to wait till they towed me in. Now I'll have a look what, what's actually wrong. The problem was diagnosed as a faulty oil sensor, but with the motor down on power, it was decided that another engine change was needed. Once again, the technicians went into action to change engines in time for the second free practice session. There was a great deal of tension in all the teams on the Saturday. After two days of free practice, it was time for the official qualifying sessions. The Johnson Matthew BMW team was planning to run on both race and qualifying tyres during the official time sessions, with tactics now starting to play a major role. We need three sets of um, 650s, 650, and one set of 660s. Okay, thank you. Work up and down the pit lane had taken on a new intensity as teams and drivers prepared for the first qualifying session. It was now that all the hard work over the preceding few days would be put to the acid test. Once again, the TV monitors in all the pits were a center of attraction for team managers and technicians as they anxiously watched the progress of their charges. team, the passage at Monza had not been a smooth one. Touring car racing in South Africa is only in its first year, and the Johnson Matthew BMW team was forced to start virtually from scratch against teams with years of experience in a highly competitive world. Up against the top drivers in the world, it was a situation which helped heap additional pressure on Dion Joubert. Pressure on me is, is a personal thing. Racing drivers tend to be selfish, you know, you race for ourselves, really. 
that the pressure I feel is to start for me and, and for the team not to look not to look bad. I want to be I want to be one of the quickest. Um, and that's a, a very much personal pressure it would be on me if I was American or anything else or, or one of the ten Italians or whatever they are here. So being the only South African is is great, but I would have liked to have more of them here yeah, so we could you know, help each other. Professional race drivers, even if they lack a little in international experience, are not short on self-confidence. It is a trait that goes with the job, and Joubert was quick to admit that he felt more at home on the track than out of the car. The only intimidation I feel is that uh, I'm actually in their country. Uh, they're very sure of themselves, especially Italians, they're very sure of themselves here at Monza, they know everybody, they speak the language. They're very sure of themselves, uh, and uh, you know, I'm very much an unknown guy. And, uh, but I don't feel any uh, intimidation on the track. They just, I follow them and I, and I see that, that, that our South African drivers are as good as they are um, in saloon cars anyway. And uh, there are some very hard people in South African road races that I've come up against. So I don't really feel intimidated by any of these guys. After a brave effort, Joubert qualified on the 16th row of the grid. Let's have a look at some of the fortunes and misfortunes of some of the other fancied runners in qualifying sessions that never lacked for interest or incident. To the victor, the spoils. To one of the losers, a lonely walk back to the pits. For Pion Joubert, it was a sad moment. Yeah, it was really my fault. Um, I, I was busy watching Cleland. Um, didn't want to get in his way, but I still wanted to get around the corner because I was catching that green car and uh, uh, just fun. Um, very disappointing. But um, I, was, I think I was doing reasonably well up to then. Um, so hopefully we'll come back and show the guys we can do it. I think we can disappoint. And that's fair when you work hard and it's not that outcome what you expected. You can be disappointed but not depressed because you've done a good job, a damn good job. And I think it will not be the last time. We are in to stay and we are in to come back again. And that's what we will do. So thank you also from my side. Well done. BMW is proud to have shared highlights of Dion Joubert's assault on the Touring Car Challenge at Monza with you here on Motorsport Special today. BMW, sheer driving pleasure.